Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 18th lecture and before going to the 18th lecture let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. If I do recall quickly we have done the Gaussian elimination for square matrices. How Gaussian elimination can be carried out for square matrices? By looking at the pivotals which are free from 0 and then making the below pivotal elements 0. So thereby we use elementary row operations. Now it is quite interesting to ask the question what would happen to the Gaussian elimination and how it can be carried out if the matrix happens to be a rectangular matrix. Now let us consider this example 3 rows 2 columns. First row is 1 2 Second row is 3, 4. Third row is 5, 6. So I denote it as M, that is number of rows, and I denote it as N, number of columns. Let us note down a number called K, which is the minimum of. 3 comma 2 so which is 2. Eliminate the entries in the first column of A below the diagonal the multipliers are M21 so that is R2 minus 3 times of R1. Similarly, R3 minus 5 times of R1. So, if you do use these two elementary row operations, the multiplier M21 is minus 3, the multiplier M31 is minus 5, this is minus 5. And with this, update the matrix. A22 is equal to, this is updated one, A122, that will be equal to A22 plus M21 into A12. So that is 4 minus. 3 times of 2 that will be equal to 4 minus 6 which is equal to minus 2. That is how I do get the value minus 2. Similarly, A32 is nothing but A132 that is updated value a32 plus m31 multiplier m31 times of a12 so you get the value minus 4 so with these two operations the updated matrix a of 1 turns out to be 1 comma 2 that is first row 0 comma minus 2 second row 0 comma minus 4 third row this is what we have achieved for k is equal to 1 
now when i go for k is equal to 2 eliminate the entries in the second column of a1 that is updated matrix below the diagonal and the multipliers are minus 2 that means minus 4 minus 2 minus 2 so minus 4 plus 4 that happens to be 0 that's how you have carried out 0 over here So 1 comma 2, 0 comma minus 2, 0 comma minus 4. So if you for the k is equal to 2, so if you use these multipliers, so the finally the matrix takes into this form. 1 comma 2, 0 comma minus 2. 0 comma 0. So this is totally 0 the row is. So we will have only 2 by 2. So this is the main diagonal below that are zeros. So that is observation we could see from over here. Right. So this is in fact 3 rows 2 columns but this is looks as so this is the main diagonal below that it would be zeros above or non zeros which is an upper triangular matrix u in this case is 3 by 2 upper triangular matrix you can also call it as 2 by 2 upper triangular matrix because anyway this is zero row so it is redundant By using the multipliers, we can form the lower triangular matrix. So this is the main diagonal M21, M31, M32. So you get what we call the lower triangular matrix. So upper triangular matrix straight away it comes when you apply the elementary row operations but the lower triangular matrix could be formed by using the multipliers as shown over here. So essentially for the matrix A we could be able to write it as multiplication of lower triangular matrix upper triangular matrix we can also verify l of q is equal to l is nothing but all zeros 3 5 2 this is the form of l and this is the form of u 1, 2, 0, minus 2, this is zeros. So when you multiply, you end up this matrix. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the matrix A. So you get the multiplication of two matrices, L, U, where L is the in this form and u is in this form. Now it is very interesting to see the flop counts that is number of floating point operations. number of floating point operations per second. Since the matrix is 3 by 2, Gaussian elimination process requires m n cube m n square minus 
n cube by 3 where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns number of rows and number of columns now if m is equal to n then it is m into m square minus m cube by 3 so 3 m cube minus m cube divided by 3 so it is 2 m cube divided by 3 where m is the square matrix suppose m is equal to 3 then 27 into 2 by 3 so 9 3 ja, so it would be 18 for a square matrix of order 3 by 3 so that means the floating point operation per second that is what is called complexity of the algorithm so in the previous case m is equal to 3 n is equal to 2 so 3 into 2 to the 4 minus 3 3 cube 27 divided by 3 so 36 minus 27 divided by 3 so which is equal to 9 by 3 which is 3 we have seen in this example a matrix is decomposed into multiplication of two matrices L into U. Now it is very curious to ask the question is it always possible to write a coefficient matrix into product of two matrices L and U. The answer would be in the affirmative provided if the matrix is diagonally dominant that means that means absolute value of a11 should be greater than some of the elements in that particular row absolute value of a22 will be greater than or equal to some of the elements in that particular row so if this happens for all the rows then the matrix is said to be diagonally dominant. So, if the matrix is diagonally dominant, certainly you can decompose the matrix A into product of two matrices L into U. On the other hand, if the matrix is not diagonally dominant, still one can make decomposition, but it is not certain. Now let us look at into the what are the difficulties of Gaussian elimination without pivoting. As we know Gaussian elimination without pivoting fails if any of the pivot is zero. If any of the pivot is zero Gaussian elimination fails. However, it is worse at if any pivot if any pivot becomes close to zero in this case the method can be carried to completion the method can be carried to completion but the obtained results may be totally wrong but the obtained results may be totally wrong let the gaussian elimination see this from this example let the gaussian elimination without pivoting be applied to this matrix what is the speciality of this matrix a11 is 0 0.0001 a12 is 1 a21 is 1 a22 is 1. So, A11 is very small value in compare to all other elements in that particular matrix. So, we should be very careful while handling this matrix. Let us say that we use 3 digit arithmetic 
there is only one step we have just one multiplier m21 is minus 1 over 10 to the power minus 4 so which becomes 10 power 4 and u is equal to a1 which turns out to be point 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 minus 10 raised to the power 4. So essentially this will take into this form. And L is of this form. So if you look at in this form, A11 is 1, A12 is 0, A21 is very bigger value, 10 power 4. So the product of L and U is LU. And curiously, when you multiply this L into U, which is different from A. So A is not equal to L into U. A is not equal to L into U. A is not equal to L into U. And note that the pivot A11, which is equal to 0 0.0001, which is very close to 0 which is very close to 0. This smaller pivot gave, this smaller pivot gave a large multiplier. This smaller pivot gave large multiplier. The large multiplier, when used to update the entries, the large multiplier, when used to update the entries, eliminated the smaller entries, that is 1 minus 10 power 4 became minus of 10 power 4. Minus of 10 power 4. Fortunately, we can avoid this small pivot. Fortunately, we can avoid this small pivot just by row interchanges. Just by row interchanges. Consider the matrix with the first and second rows interchanged giving rise to a prime is 11 0.00011 gaussian elimination applied to a prime gives rise to this matrix so a is equal to a of 1 so that is nothing but 1, 1, 1. This is the upper triangular matrix. And this is the L lower triangular matrix. So this is the main diagonal. Lower will be non-zeros, upper will be zeros. So that is L and this is U. You can see very closely what we did over here and what is the difficulty how we could able to overcome this difficulty and if you see very closely note that the pivot is in this case is a1 of 1 1 which is equal to 1 the product becomes l into u where l is equal to what we have seen in the in the previous slide and the product u, when you pre-multiply with L, you do get a matrix A prime. It is true that with the interchange above, we now obtain an LU factorization of the matrix A prime. as permuted version of the matrix A and not of diagonal of the original matrix. So now we would see how actually the permutation matrices and their properties would affect the solution to the matrix equations. For that, we consider a non-zero square matrix P 
which I call it as permutation matrix. Formally, it could be it could be defined as it is the matrix having exactly one non-zero entry in each row and column which is one and the rest are all zeros. Such a matrix is called a permutation matrix. Thus, if alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha n is a permutation of 1, 2, etc. n, then the associated permutation matrix P is given by in this form where P is equal to alpha 1 transpose e power alpha 2 transpose like that e power transpose alpha n where etj is the i throw of n by n identity matrix. Similarly, you can write this P as P is equal to E alpha 1, E alpha 2, E alpha 3, E alpha n, where E i is the i throw of i which is a permutation matrix. Now, let us look into this example. P1, which satisfies the definition of permutation matrix. So, first row is 0, 1, 0. Second row is 0, 0, 1. Third row is 1, 0, 0. P2 is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and P3 is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 so these are all permutation matrices they do satisfy the definition of permutation matrices now it is interesting to see effect of pre-multiplication and post-multiplication by a permutation matrix. If P1 is equal to alpha 1 transpose, alpha 2 transpose, alpha n transpose. Let us multiply this matrix with P1, P1 into A. So you will have alpha 1 throw of A, alpha 2 throw of A, like that you have alpha n throw of A. So essentially you will have this matrix P1 of A. Similarly, if P2 is equal to E alpha 1, E alpha 2, E alpha 3, E alpha n, then I can have A P2 is equal to alpha 1 throw of A, alpha 2 throw of A, so in general n throw of A, thus 
thus the effect of pre multiplication of a pre multiplication of a by a permutation matrix is a permutation of the associated rows of a and that of post multiplication is the permutation of the associated columns you can see the example a is equal to a11 a12 a13 a21 a22 a23 a31 a32 a33 start with the permutation matrix p1 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 and this is the form of is e2 transpose e3 transpose e1 transpose now when you multiply this matrix p1 of a that is a21 a22 a23 a31 a32 a33 a11 a12 a13 so it becomes second row of a third row of a first row of a Similarly, P2 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 So I will write it as E3 E1, E2. So I get AP1. So that is A13, A11, A12. A two three A two one A two two A three three A three one A three two So third column of A first column of A first column of A an important property of a permutation matrix is that it is orthogonal that is P multiplied by P transpose pre multiplied with P transpose is unity 
As a consequence of this, we have the following theorems or conclusions or results. The inverse of a permutation matrix P is its transpose and which is also a permutation matrix. The product of two permutation matrices is also a permutation matrix and essentially the permutation matrix is orthogonal. Now we would see Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. As the above example suggests, disaster in Gaussian elimination without pivoting can perhaps be avoided by identifying a good pivot. A pivot is as large as possible in magnitude at each step before the process of elimination is applied. The good pivot may be located among the entries in columns or among all the sub matrices of the current matrix. So in the former case, since the search is only partial, The method is called partial pivoting. And in the latter case, the method is called complete pivoting. The process is just a slight modification of Gaussian elimination in the following sense. At each step, do the following. Identify the pivot as large as the largest entry among all the entries in the pivot column. Interchange the appropriate rows to bring the pivot entry to the diagonal position of the current matrix. Perform Gaussian elimination to the row permitted matrix. The process is illustrated 
with a by 4 by 4 example for this we assume that rows 3 4 and rows in step 1 2 3 respectively if you see very clearly in step 1 A11, A12, A13, A14. So A33 is the largest value in magnitude. So it is a prebiot. So after having done this algorithm, it would become Look at this step 2, A31, A32, A33. And A34. And the suffix are updated. So these are all zeros. When you go to the updated A1, so that's how we identify the row interchanges of second and fourth. So essentially with this step, we do get like this. Still A23 is remaining over here. When you go to the next step, I would be changing this element by interchanging the rows, these two rows, I do get a final matrix of this form. So this is a permuted matrix and it is an upper triangular matrix and it is an upper triangular matrix. General process kth step set A0 is A. Then to obtain the matrix A K, A K of A J from A K minus 1 at the previous step, do the following. Identify the largest element in magnitude among all the elements of column A K below row K minus 1 of the matrix A K minus 1. Let it will be noted as A K minus 1 R K K. Interchange the rows R K and K to bring AK minus 1 RK to the diagonal position. Once it comes as a diagonal position, apply Gauss elimination without row interchanges with ARKK as a pivot to the submatrix consisting of through n and columns k through n. So, Gaussian elimination 
with partial pivoting in terms of matrix multiplication we can make the following observations row interchange is equivalent to pre multiplying the matrix by a show double permutation matrix gaussian elimination is equivalent to pre multiplying the matrix by an elementary matrix as we have seen in the previous case so we can write a of 1 is m1 times of p1a where p1 is the permutation matrix a2 is equal to m2 into p2a1 like that you will get as an minus 1 is equal to mn minus 1 pn minus 1 a raised to the power n minus 2 for n is equal to 4 the complete process is like this so a is equal to these elements so in the step 1 when you apply permutation matrix p1 and multipliers so you do get the matrix like this this i call it as a1 when you go to step 2 a1 is equal to p2 you are obtain, operating so you get a matrix called like this these are zeros these are zeros second upper triangle matrix in step 3 a2 is p3 a2 like that you will get so this will be like this there is a scope over here so that means all are this is 0 this is 0 this is 0 so you would be making these are zeros so that your competition will become better and better so lu factorization for gaussian elimination now can be written as l of p of a is equal to lu where p is a permutation matrix right p a is equal to l u where p is the permutation matrix l is a lower unit triangular matrix and u is an upper triangular matrix this can be shown in two steps and the step one for n is equal to four so a is an upper triangular matrix so you can write u is equal to a3 then from step 3 a3 is equal to like this and for n by n matrix this will be like this so it will be shown how to extract the matrices p and l from the matrix ma is equal to u factorization so we will have pa is equal to lu p u is the upper triangle matrix p is the lower triangle matrix a is the coefficient matrix p is the and p is the matrix permutation matrix so for n is equal to 4 we can write these as m3 p3 m2 p2 m1 p1 so by noting that p3 2 and p2 2 is 1 so therefore we will end up with m3 prime m2 prime m1 prime p into a where as discussed m3 prime is m3 m2 prime is p3 m2 p3 etc and p is nothing but the product of three matrices so letting m1 prime over inverse times of m2 prime over inverse we will get what we call l of u is equal to p into a for n by n matrices this will boil down to in this fashion p is equal to p1 p2 p3 etc and l is nothing but l1 m1 prime m1 inverse m2 inverse so already we spoken 
M1, M2, M3, they do exhibit the inverse. Now you consider this example as we spoke, permuted the matrix A456. So when you multiply this with P2, you will get P1 of A. So multiply first row of the permuted A by minus 1 by 2 and second by minus 1 by 4 and add it to the second and third row. So what would happen here? So you will end up with these matrices. 1, 0, 0, minus 1 by 2, 1, 0, minus 1 by 4, 0, 1. Multiplied with 4, 5, 6, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4. So that's what we call it as M1, P1, A1. Second step permitted A1 is nothing but P2, A2, A1. The Gaussian elimination second order row of the permitted A1 by 2 by 3 and add it to the third row of A2. Then you do get A2 is 4, 5, 6, this matrix. And this is the form of the matrix you do get after this step. So when you factorize this MA is equal to U, Gaussian elimination multiplies second row of the permitted A1 and add it to the third row. So this is the process. So this is the matrix and this is the U. So when you apply these matrix, you will get back to the original whatever is being required. So similarly you compute P is equal to P1, P2. This is what you get it. And L is nothing but M1 inverse, M2 inverse. This is what you got it and u is equal to a2. So these two are very important. So when you come to the storage scheme for LU factorization using Gaussian elimination with the partial pivoting, the multipliers can be stored in the appropriate places of the lower triangular part of A as they are computed. A can be overwritten with a, a k as soon as the latter is formed and thus the final upper triangular matrix U is nothing but U of A of N minus 1 be stored. So the permutation includes RK have to be stored in separate and single subscriber integer array so that it can be updated. So I will stop over here. Thank you for listening the my lectures and tomorrow we will be doing what we call the Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting and see that what are the advantages and what is the complexity of those algorithms. Thank you very much.